Hello again. I'm Pastor RJ and we're here to our daily devotion. Scripture passage is found in Malachi chapter 4 verses 5 and 6. And it is written, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents or else I will come and strike the land with the to with total destruction. So you see we are fascinated with the last things. Uh, what will happen in the end times? How will God rescue us with this all uh, we call this IED system that it's one way for the one one world government and so we become scared and we are thinking oh this is the signs of the last things the end times but let me tell you this before God comes to annihilate total destruction he will first send prophet Elijah okay I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the chi hearts of the children to their fathers this is niv translation so it translated parents but in niv 1984 version it's translated fathers so 2011 is somehow version 2011 niv is somehow a uh, more more concerned with the translation so so they want to include everybody else. So if the original translation speaks only with the fathers, they want to make it the parents. Okay. So here, men of Israel, if it's only men, the translation of NIV 2011, here, people of Israel. Okay. So they are trying to adapt not to be a gender biased translation. But the real words here are just addressing to the fathers. So, I will send the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day comes. I will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the children to their fathers. So, the last ministry or else, see here, if the reconciliation between the father and son, between a son and a father, a daughter and a father will not take place. This is what will happen. Or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. Are you listening? If the reconciliation did not take place, if there will be no reconciliation between a father and son relationship, then I will come for total destruction. Which means, in the last days, the heroes are the people who will be sharing the good news of reconciliation especially reconciliation between the families you see today there are so many broken homes and there the rise of fatherless generation is soaring very high the teenage pregnancy is soaring also very high so we have come to a generation where fatherlessness is a norm you see that's what we are encountering right now we have been struggling with this fatherless generation and so we as a church we strive to preach good news to the young people to forgive their dad to be reconciled with their parents to understand their parents you see your parents don't need to be perfect to be respected your parents is human as well they make mistakes it doesn't mean that if you are a parent, you will not make any wrong decision. You will still make a wrong decision. But how you handle your wrong decision will determine if you are a woman or a girl. A, a man or a boy. Okay, so you take responsibility with your failure. Okay, so you don't need, your parents doesn't need to be perfect to be respected. Because if perfection is the basis to be respected, then no one deserves to be respected. You see, Ephesians 6 1 said, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. 
Honor your father and mother, for this is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and you may live long in the land. Paul right here is addressing the kids in the place of Ephesus. Do you know that Paul is honoring these kids by addressing them? Children, obey your parents. You see, in that very patriarchal time, kids are not being addressed. They are required to obey or else they will face stone to death. <laughs> you don't address kids. They are considered property. Kids during that time is a property. And so Paul, talking to them, is giving them an identity. Giving them word that you can decide. Even though society dictates that you will obey like a robot, I tell you, honor them. You don't, even though people don't address you to honor your parents, I tell you to honor them. Not because you're afraid, but because of the Lord. Honor your father and mother, for this is the first command with a promise that you may live long in the land and it may go well with you. Two, two keys for success here. You obey your parents and you honor them. Obey in the Lord. Okay, so children obey your parents in the Lord. So if they ask you to do something that is not in the Lord, then you don't obey. But you honor them. So you don't tell them something that is not for parents. Are you not terrified to curse your parents, to tell them something that is abominable in the eyes of God? You are saying like P-U-T-A? To your parents, you call them names. Aren't you scared with that one? Don't you know that you are shortening your life? Don't you know that the more you curse your parents, the more you shorten your life? And the more you think you are better than your parents, when you get married, you will realize that you can become like your parents and more so worse than them. Okay, so for the young people out there, we have this ministry. We also did it last last Sundays with the young people. We saw tears. I was preaching about the Father's love. And when I asked the young people, kindly raise your hands for those who don't have their father. Majority, I was shocked. And actually, I'm not shocked because I've been doing this ministry for the past 10 years. And I've seen so many young people who don't have father's father image. And so, attached with that lack of father comes many problems like early pregnancy, teenage pregnancy. Because the young ladies were looking for boyfriend in a very young age. And the age of their boyfriend is twice or thrice with their age. Because they are not looking for a boyfriend, they are looking for a father image, a father's love. But they were abused by those man, men, okay? And the young, the young boys who don't have fathers, they were also abused. So they are, they have been searching for this father's image, father's love, and they found it in the wrong place. Okay, that is why Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, tells us those things. You see, it says here in Malachi 2 verse 15, Has not the one God made you? You belong to Him in body and spirit. And what does one God seek? Godly offspring. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. It says here, You men, husband of one wife, be faithful with your wife. Do not leave them. The wife of your youth. Why? Because the desire of God, why God made you one, is because so that you will produce godly offspring. Marriage was initiated for the next generation so that there will be godly offspring. You see, if there is one father and one mother, then there is a big percentage that the child will grow godly. But remove the one in the picture. Remove a father in the picture. Then the boy becomes dysfunctional. The girl becomes dysfunctional. The rest is already in the picture. 
Okay, so what I'm trying to say is broken home, broken marriages results broken next generation. And so if we want God not to judge the land, let us proclaim this reconciliation. And if you are not yet reconciled with your parents, with your dad, with your mom, I encourage you to be reconciled. Okay, so that is our daily devotion, the word of the Lord for us. So the Lord bless us, the Lord bless you and cause His face to shine upon you. May He lift His countenance towards you and be gracious to you. The Lord bless your going out and your coming in. The Lord bless your work. The Lord grant you favor with your bosses. And the Lord give you wisdom in handling your business. May God give you wisdom in dealing with your problems right now. May God give you wisdom in troubleshooting your problems right now. For the broken relationship right now with, with husband and wife, I pray that you will be reconciled in Jesus' name. I pray that God will speak to both of you. That God will reconcile this, this in the, these differences that you have, that you constantly fight with. For the children, I pray that you, God will give you an obedient heart to your parents and honoring them, even if you think they are not right. Okay? So the Lord bless you. The Lord bless our entrepreneurs. If you are an entrepreneur, the Lord bless you with more clients, many clients, that God will send angels to be your clients to buy your products. To sustain your family. The Lord bless you and cause His face to shine upon you. And give you peace. The Lord bless us all. Thank you for listening. See you tomorrow. Shalom. If you want to support this ministry, the Mutual Homes Gospel Christian Church Ministry, you can give your offering or donation to the Gcash number that we will be providing. It is for the expansion of God's kingdom and for the development of the ministry that we can reach more people and we can help more people in the poverty line to provide for their food. The Lord bless us all and thank you for your generous heart. If God touched your heart to give, any amount will do. We appreciate it. And if you want to give, Kindly send your receipt in this page as well. You can record it. Okay? The Lord bless you more and may God's face shine upon you. The Lord bless us all. Hello, thank you for watching. If you are near Mutual Homes, Soldiers Hills, and if you are looking for a church, we are excited to meet you in person. We would love to have you. So see you this Sunday. Bye!